So today is going to be the start of my 2021 wrap up videos. And I'm going to be doing them in a tier ranking manner. I know this tier ranking thing is kind of uh, old news, but I have yet to ever use the program and I have never done a tier ranking video. So you're going to get a whole bunch of them all at once in the month of January, because I'm going to do one not only for the movies that I watched in 2021, which is what this video is, but also the TV shows that I've watched and all of the books that I've read in 2021, because I did almost no wrap up videos. I don't think I talked about any of the books I read in 2021, unless it was in a vlog. So you didn't really get any wrap ups or any thoughts really, unless it's as I was reading them. So I'm going to do a whole little series of these videos, like a trilogy, if you will. And this is going to be the first one. And I'm sorry if the lighting sucks. This is the kind of my setup is just a hot mess right now. I have so many things plugged into my laptop that I'm worried that it's going to overheat and crash. And so hopefully this works out. And we're going to ignore all of the background here because it, we're in a work in progress. <laughs> it's after the holidays. My room's a mess. My bookshelves are a hot mess. I'm going to try to get through this fairly quickly. The, that's be saying a lot for me. It is late. For me, it's late. It's about eight o'clock right now and I do have to work in the morning. So I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm going to do like the title of this video suggests the yeah. 20 movies I watched in 2020. These are 2021 releases that I watched in the year they came out. Most of them I did see in theaters. There are a few that were released as Netflix movies and I watched them on Netflix. And I think one of them, only one of them as far as I can tell, was one that I watched after it had already been released on DVD. The rest of these I saw when they came out in theaters or when they were released on their platform. So I'm going to switch over. There are 20 of them. A lot of them are going to be ones that you guys are familiar with because they're going to be the big mainstream movies that were released this year. Yes, Marvel is on here. So let me switch over. This will work. Okay. You guys can see the screen. We're good. Everyone's good. You can see it all. So here's a sneak peek at all the movies. It doesn't look like there's 20 movies on here. But there are. <laughs> Uh, I actually counted them because I didn't, it didn't look like that many. These are not in any particular order at all. I didn't even upload them in this order. That's just the order they were thrown in when I uploaded the files. So we're just going to go in the order that they are on the screen here. So my two rankings, I have four of them. They are not creative. I apologize. I had no idea what to label them as. But so our top top tier is for the collection. These are movies that I would purchase the actual physical DVD of and add it to my physical collection. Tier two is Would Watch Again. So this is a film that um, I would either spend the money and watch it a second time in the theater, or if it was on TV, I would watch it if, as something to watch. Uh, <laughs> tier three is I Saw This. It's a movie that I watched. I may have liked it at the time. I don't remember watching it or I don't remember anything about it really, if that makes sense. Uh, it's kind of a forgettable film. Uh, and then our fourth tier is I want my money back. I s wish I had not actually spent the money on this movie to go that I went to see, would not see it again. Actually, that's not true. A lot of these, a lot of movies I say I won't see again, I do watch years later and I'm just like, yeah, either I, my mind changes or I'm just like, yeah, I remember why I hated this movie now. The first one is The Castle for Christmas. It was a Netflix Christmas movie. Uh, she's a writer who kills off one of her, she has this really successful book series, kills off the main love interest in the series. Everyone's pissed off, um, but she did it because she was dealing with her own bad relationship in life. And she takes a mental retreat kind of vacation to Scotland uh, and buys a castle <laughs> owned by this uh curmudgeon -y scottish uh i think he's a duke i can't remember what he is he's some kind of like high-ranking scottish title and I, I watched this relatively recently which is why i remember so much about it normally the further back it is the less i remember 
But I enjoyed this one. It was fun. I really love the enemies to lovers aspect of, I love that trope. It is my favorite trope, especially when it's done really well. So this one, I would definitely watch it again. Uh, I don't think I would buy it. I don't even think it would be released on DVD, but I would definitely watch it again, maybe next Christmas. Probably not any other time throughout the year, but definitely over, over Christmas if it popped up again. Uh, okay, so next one is Black Widow, which is our Marvel movie. I think this is the first Marvel I watched this year. Yes, because I think these others came out later. I don't remember. I don't remember the, the release dates for these. Black Widow. Now, I'm not a huge Marvel snob. I enjoy the movies. I enjoy the lore that goes along with them, but I'm not like deep, deep into it like a lot of people are. And Black Widow was kind of like one of the eh characters for me. Um, I was interested in seeing the movie, though, just because of the progressing, the con intertwining storyline that Marvel is. And I loved Yelena, Florence Pugh's character. She was great. I'm so happy that she has a spot in Hawkeye, which I haven't watched just for a little bit sneak preview of the TV shows of 2021. I have not watched Hawkeye. I don't have Disney Plus, so I was able to watch that, but loved her character. It was super fun. I don't even, honestly, I don't even think I own any of the Marvel movies. So I, just for the fact that I don't have any of the rest of them, I wouldn't purchase this one per se, but I would absolutely watch it again. Absolutely. It was enjoyable. I really liked it. Uh, Dear Evan Hansen. Oh my God. So this was a movie I pretty much dragged everyone to <laughs> when most of these movies we saw in a big group of people. And I was so obsessed. I haven't seen the Broadway production. I really want to. Um, but I was so excited for this movie to come out. I love the message of this movie. Uh, uh, Ben Platt is phenomenal. I didn't, I mean, I know him from Pitch Perfect, obviously. He was obviously the original Evan Hansen in the original run of the Broadway play. And I was so happy that they ended up bringing him back to play the same character in the movie, even though he was a little bit old for the part, but like, it's Hollywood. That happens all the time. This movie was amazing. And there were people that I dragged to this movie that left the theater going, you know what? That was actually very good. I enjoyed that. So this is a movie that I would absolutely purchase and watch over and over and over again. I love musicals. <sighs> Next is Fast 9. This movie, listen, I love the Fast and Furious franchise. I think it's so much fun. It's so cool. I have like, a, I'm not an, a car person. I have an interest in cars, but like not to the point where like, I don't know. Like, it's not a crazy thing. It just, I like these movies. They're fun. I like the street racing aspect. These movies are not the same anymore. I, the only thing I remember about this movie is when <laughs> Ludacris and Tyrese Gibson go to space. And I remember um, Lucas Black's character from uh, Tokyo Drift like lost his freaking marbles in this movie and like straps a rocket to a car, which is what sends Luda, Luda and Tyrese into space. And I'm just like, what is happening right now? Like, I don't even, I don't know. Like, it's not, it wasn't a, do I want my money back? I don't know. I, I don't, gosh, I love, the humor aspect of this. I don't remember this movie though. I know I saw it. I, I watched all the fast movies. So this isn't like an I saw this tier. Would I watch it again? Yes. But like I like the first three, four movies the best. Fast actually fast five. So like the first five movies are fine. <laughs> And maybe even six. Six is pretty good too. But like, you're starting to get a little bit crazy now in the this franchise. And I don't know. It was just, I don't remember anything. And sending cars to space, I feel like it was more of a joke because of the fandom joking that, what are they going to do next? Like, there's more movies coming out. What are they going to do? We're going to send them to space. I just, it's not, it, it's, I want my money back. I would have rather watched this when it pops on TV in two years. 
that's how I lot of, watch a lot of movies, to be honest. So I, yes, that that's, no. <laughs> Next, we have Free Guy. This movie was so good. Like, I didn't expect it to be what it was. Uh, with a video game character, like, you see the life of this guy living in a video game. And I'm one of those people that when I play video games, um, I always yeah, I get this weird, like, I wonder what they do, like, when I'm not playing. It's just one of those things that it's a really interesting concept. It was fun. Uh, but yeah, this movie was not what I was expecting. It was a lot better than I thought it would be. And I would absolutely buy this and put it in my collection. For sure. Next, we have Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now, it has been a really long time since I watched any of the original Ghostbusters movies, but there were so many callbacks in this movie to the original films, especially after um, uh, Harold passed away and they used his character and turn him into like a ghost figure. Oh my God, it's so good. So like it's his, his daughter and his grandchildren that are like the main characters in this movie and then of course we have paul rudd who is hilarious there were some like weird aspects to this with like this whole underground like thing i don't know it was a little bit of a weird part of it um but there were the callbacks we had those stay puffed marshmallow little guys and there were some fun parts uh, i would definitely watch this again it was a fun time i don't have the or any of the original ghostbusters so i don't think i would actually buy this movie maybe not i don't know if i if i got like the box set with all three of them i would absolutely get like the whole box set but just to have this one and not the other two no but yes absolutely would watch this again if it came on tv or got put on netflix or something it was a fun time and i love mckenna grace i think she is a wonderful up-and-coming actress i cannot wait for her to grow up and see where she takes her acting career there have been so many movies with her in it that I've really, really enjoyed, especially uh, Gifted with her and Chris Evans and Octavia Spencer. So good. I highly recommend that movie. Halloween Kills. Okay, so I watched, before we went to see this movie, we rewatched the original Halloween and then we rewatched Halloween, the 2018 Halloween. This one, compared to the 2018 Halloween, not as good. I liked the 2018 Halloween a lot better than this one, especially because Halloween Kills was more like Halloween 2, uh, Halloween 2, I think it was, where Jamie Lee Curtis's character Laurie Strode isn't really in it a whole lot. She's like in the hospital most of the time and it's like the other people dealing with uh, Michael. There was an ending scene of this where it just, I was like, really? That's a little bit much. A little bit much so i would i i would watch it again i would i would watch it again i do enjoy the franchise i enjoy most of the franchise <laughs> so when they re not when they rebooted it but like when they started with the new halloween in 2018 they took it directly from the original 1978 and they pretty much cut out all of the stuff in between like all of what was supposed to be like supposedly canon like that i don't know if you ever watched those movies but the freaking canon stuff is just all over the place like she had two different husbands and uh, two different kids i don't know there was a whole like web of storyline that was just like weird and then there were some there's like three different paths of storylines you can take if you take out certain movies like it's a whole like complicated mess but what I liked about the 2018 one was that it direct, it just took the original movie and then it went from there. Like, they cut out all the crap in the middle. So I, I do like that more linear path it's taking with this last trilogy. So I am really excited for Halloween Ends. I would really love to see how this concludes. I will just say one thing. I will be super, super upset if in killing, if Laurie Strode ends up killing Michael but then like she dies in the process like i'd be or like she i don't know i don't know i don't want to give any spoilers for this movie because the ending of this movie is like oh, oh. <laughs> but i'm just gonna say i would be very upset if she spent this much time trying to kill michael and gets killed herself as she's killing michael like i'd be super upset about that anyway that's just me throwing off 
All right, next, House of Gucci. This is one of the most recent ones I've watched. I, this was a very long movie. Very interesting movie. I never knew really the story of history of the Gucci brand. I, I can't afford to buy any of it, so I don't really pay attention to it, to be honest. Let me just say that Lady Gaga has been doing some really great acting stuff. Like, of course, we all saw A Star is Born. Fantastic movie. I was very interested to see her in a different kind of role, because, especially with an accent like that, which I saw in an interview that she, like, literally stayed in the accent the entire time they were filming. <laughs> and Adam Driver was just got, like, really annoyed by it. I think that was a Graham Norton interview they did recently to promote the movie. Um, so this was an informative movie. I don't know if I would watch it again. It was very long. And there were parts where it was very slow. Like the pacing was really off. And like the end got weird. Like it kind of didn't flow very nicely. If I like, I don't know. I don't know. It, there were just like a lot of, I should have probably put a, like a thing in between. Like a ranking in between here. That was like, it's okay. I wouldn't watch it again. But you know, I... It was like, I, I have seen it. I remember watching it. It wasn't terrible. It was interesting. It was informative. So I'm just going to stick it here. I think I should probably just change the title of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was just a lot of, I think there was a lot of pacing issues. And it was just a very, it was a very slow start. Um, but it was very interesting. A very interesting story about a family and a dynasty that I was not really aware of. At the very end of this, I didn't realize that none of the Gucci family are part of the brand anymore. Like, they're just all on their own. Um, but, okay. Jungle Cruise. This was a fun movie. Uh, Jack Whitehall, fantastic. Fun movie. Definitely watch it again if it was on television. Uh, I don't think it's one I would specifically choose to watch if it was put on Netflix or Hulu or something. But if it was on TV and I would be scrolling through, I would stop and watch it. Absolutely. Ugh. Justice League. Zack Snyder's Justice League. I waited forever for this movie to come out. And let me tell you, it was worth the wait. This was so good. The four hour, I watched it straight through. You can watch it in four parts. It's broken up into four different parts. So you don't have to watch it straight through. And I know that a lot of people, I tell them to watch this and I say it's a four hour movie and they're like totally put off by it. Like, no, there's sections that you can watch. You can watch it as like four episodes if you really want to. But I, I enjoyed the original Justice League. And then I started reading more about the, look like, again, I'm not a DC snob. But I say this all the time. I love Henry Cavill's Superman. I do. And I will watch anything or I, Henry Cavill in general. I watch anything he's in. I love his Superman. So I naturally enjoyed Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman and Justice League. However, after learning about the controversy surrounding that movie and everything that went on with the making of that movie... I was no longer a fan. So I was very, very excited to see that Zack Snyder was finally releasing his version of the film as it was meant to be seen. And I loved it. I don't know if I would watch the entire thing again all in once. Um, because Superman doesn't come in until like two and a half hours into the movie. And I was very, I was like, what is coming on screen? Where is he? Where is he? Um... But I do own this already. So absolutely part of my collection. I do have Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman. I do have the original uh, release of the Justice League. But this one is absolutely, I loved it. And there's so much more expansion that could be done with the series if they would just Restore the Snyderverse. Like, I absolutely believe they should absolutely restore the Snyderverse. 100%. Next, we have Love Hard. So this was part of my watching in my Christmas um, spirit mood, which is odd for me to have. I don't normally. I'm not a Christmas spirity person. But Love Hard was one of the other ones that was released this year with Nina Dobrev. But it was a cute movie. 
I don't remember a lot of it though. I remember he catfishes her. <laughs> I, I remember watching it. I don't remember a lot about it. I remember them singing Baby It's Cold Outside, but they swap roles. She was like, I don't want to sing that song. Like that's you know what that song's about, right? Um, and it actually sounded pretty good, but would I watch it again? Maybe not. I don't know. I would say probably not. Um, but it was a cute movie. Uh, next, yeah, so the, this is the most recent movie I saw, which is Spider Man No Way Home. Loved it. This is one, yes. I like I said, I don't have, I don't own a lot of them. I don't own the Marvel movies. Tom Holland's Spider Man is like how I feel about Henry Cavill's Superman. I love him as Spider Man. I know Tobey Maguire is the OG. Everyone has a soft spot for Andrew. I love Tom Holland's Spider Man. I love this, the reboot of the Spider Man. And this one with the multiverse was phenomenal. I watched this the, I think was it release day? It was the day it came out or the day after it came was released. And the entire theater was just like up in arms about things that happen. I don't know if it's a spoiler or not. I think everyone knows pretty much a lot of what happens in the movie at this by this point. But everyone was just like, it was great. And it brings back old villains and it was good. I the ending makes me question though i heard that um they might be bringing in miles morales now instead of using tom holland which is interesting also one of the characters mentioned um him not by name but just kind of references him so i'm wondering if they're going to introduce miles morales as a multiverse character or if they're going to replace the tom holland spider-man with miles morales and I don't know. I don't know. I also heard that maybe Zendaya is not coming back. I could go, I could go a lot of different ways. Again, I'm not like deep into the lore of the, where this whole franchise is going, but I loved this movie and I would watch it again. I watch the other two when they're on TV all the time and I don't own them, but I would absolutely buy them. Absolutely would buy this one. It was so good. So the next one is Nobody. This is the one movie that I watched not in theaters. Uh, I watched it. A friend had it in, on DVD. We watched it at their house. And I didn't know it was a 2021 release. I had never even heard of it before. I honestly don't remember a whole lot about it. I know he, his family is murdered or something. I don't remember. So this is like, I, I don't remember a lot about this movie. I probably wouldn't watch it again. Um, and I didn't pay to watch it, so. But I don't have a lot to say about it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, next we have A Quiet Place Part 2. This one, I wouldn't, would I watch it again? I would watch it again. I've watched it. No, I watched, I don't know. I would probably watch it again. Uh, I liked what because John Krasinski I know did not really want to expand on the quiet place movie the original movie he just kind of wanted to leave it as is and everyone's like well it was so successful that you know you have to go on like you got to know what happens so I was it I, I I liked how he went about it and how we had a little bit of a prologue to the events prior to what happened in the first movie like how it all began pretty much or like the initial startings of it beginnings of it startings um, so you do get to see him in this before what happened at the end of the first movie, but this was interesting because I am not a Cillian Murphy fan, like really at all. I had really no interest in him, but his character in this and the rugged facial hair and everything he had, had me. I enjoyed this and I would absolutely watch it again. It was a good time and I'm glad they brought all the same characters back, they introduced a couple new ones. It was nice. It was a nice wrap to the film, I think. <laughs> okay, this is next one is Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. This one I was kind of, I didn't really want 
to see, but I was kind of like, all right, I'll go. Um, I've never seen any of the other like Resident Evil movies, but this one I know is based off of the first two, I think it's the first two video games. And I did watch a playthrough of the second video game. And all, the entire time I'm watching this movie, I'm just like, this looks exactly like the video game. And I was just like, oh my God, this, the, the freaking, the villains, like the, the, the mutated things that they have to fight. Like the big, I think it's the big boss, the first big boss they have is like, it looked exactly like the video game. The dogs in the garage and the freaking police station. Like I was like, yo, this is straight out of the video game. It was great. And that's all I could compare it to. <laughs> Would I watch it again? Probably not. Um, I really need to change the title. This is not like a thing I don't remember about. I just remember because it was so much like the video game. I don't think I'd watch it again. I definitely wouldn't buy it, but it was fun. It was interesting. I, yeah, that's all I gotta say about it. Okay, Roadrunner. This is one, pro probably the one that n a lot of you have not heard of. It's the biopic about Anthony Bourdain, who I don't know if, it, if you guys all probably know, passed away a couple years ago from suicide. But I have always been a person who was really interested in the life stories of people. And I wanted to see this. I used to love watching his, I never watched his CNN show, Parts Unknown, but I have watched No Reservations and The Layover. And uh, uh, he had another one, I think. I think there was, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was only those two. I don't know. I always enjoyed uh, watching him and I always enjoyed the voiceovers that he would do for those shows because he was so articulate and he was a storyteller and I loved the way he would write those uh, those voiceovers and the intros to those episodes and I really enjoyed this this biopic. I enjoyed it. I know I dragged people to it that were like they didn't know who he was had no idea who he was were bored for most of it, but I really enjoyed this and I do own this. So I, would I watch it again? I don't know if I'd watch it again, but I do, it's something that I, I, I did get for Christmas and I was actually really pleased to see that someone realized how much I enjoyed the film and actually bought it for me. Um, but I, after watching this, I had always wanted to get his book, Kitchen Confidential. I never got it and never read it, but I really wanted to, um, read, actually read his written word because Kitchen Confidential was his first book that he wrote. And this was before he really became like big famous. So I did finally get Kitchen Confidential. I got his, the book following that medium raw. I got the nasty bits. It was, I got like three of three or four of his books. Uh, so I, RIP Anthony. Um, <laughs> I do, I do miss his uh, crude, his dark humor and his, yeah, storytelling. It was a really interesting guy. All right, next we have Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, The Legend of the Ten Rings. I was pleasantly surprised by this film. I he's one of the Marvel characters that I don't really you don't really know, I don't know about, like you, I know the Avengers and he was a completely new one to me. I'm not a con, I don't, I've never read the Marvel comics. Like I, like I said, I'm not a big Marvel horror, Marvel guru. Um, but I watched, I was interested in this because the actor Simu, Simu, what's his name? I don't know what his name is. I'm sorry. Simu Lee, Simu Lu, Simu Lim. I got him terrible. I'll have it on the screen. You guys know who I'm talking about. Before this movie came out, I watched his little Canadian show called Kim's Convenience, which is going to be, by the way, on my TV tier ranking. Um, so I was interested to see him come from this little CBC show out of Canada and become this huge Marvel hero. And this movie was really good. And let's talk about Aquafina being in like an, a Marvel movie. I love Aquafina. She's got like that from Crazy Rich Asians and um uh Nora from Queen. She's got like that great like raspy voice and her humor and I love her. But I would absolutely watch it again. I enjoyed it a lot. Okay, so our last Christmas movie on this list is Single All the Way. Oh my god. So this had so many great people in it. It had our I can't remember the actor's name. Uh 
Yuri, Michael Yuri, I think his name is. I want to say Brandon Yuri, but Brandon Yuri is the singer, I think. And Michael Yuri, I think is his name. Uh, I knew him from the show. He played Redmond on Younger with Hilary Duff and, um, uh, oh my God, Sutton Foster, if you guys know that show. So I was excited to see that he had his like own leading role in a movie. I don't really, like, I never really was aware of this actor until I saw Younger. You've got Jennifer Coolidge in here. Um, oh my God. And what's her face from Schitt's Creek is also on, in this movie. Like, it was fun. It was cute. I enjoyed it. I would absolutely watch it again. Probably even outside of Christmas. I just had a really fun time with it. Okay, Snake Eyes. This was the G.I. Joe origin movie with Henry Golding, which was the primary reason I watched it, because I love Henry Golding. Uh, I know him from Crazy Rich Asians, like a lot of people do. And I enjoyed him from that so but snake eyes this is kind of a movie i was dragged to i didn't really have a lot of interest in it um and i don't remember a lot of it to be honest i think this is the movie that like hyundai was the sponsor for and i drive a hyundai so i just kept looking at the, the hyundai insignias i can't remember i think it was this one that they were i don't know i don't remember a lot of this movie i enjoyed See, every time I think of it, I'm picturing scenes from Shang-Chi, and it's not the same movie at all. It's not even the same franchise. Um, so I don't remember this movie. This is like, I saw this? Like, I did see it. I don't remember it. Last but not least, another Marvel movie. We have Venom, Let the Brie Carnage. This one, I was not that thrilled about, to be honest. I liked the original, the first movie better, just the Venom movie the origin story movie this one brought in a little bit too much i like woody harrelson he's a fantastic character actor there was just some weird stuff in this movie like he gets a lot of strange roles that's just the kind of guy he is um some of them are really well done really interesting some are just kind of like odd to me i don't know and then his like girlfriend. I don't know. There was like a whole thing. I don't. This movie was just like. I. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't even remember a lot of it. I remember them like in the air in a car. I don't know. I under. I, I understand you need to watch it to like get or whatever, but it wasn't. I don't really have anything to say about it. I don't even remember a lot of it to be honest. I don't. And we watched, I think, back, I think we watched Venom, then we went in the movie theater and saw, I don't know, I think that was a terrible one to end on. But that's it. There's my ranking. I don't think I would change any others of these, aside from changing the tier name of this one. Um, so I will share, I'll save this one. And I'll post the link to it down below or you guys want to leave down in the comments if you have any like think I should have changed my opinion on things or where you would rank a lot of these. Uh, let me know down in the comments. Oh, maybe I should like put it back to chatting. Take one last look. I'm going to take the screen away. So I mean, you can always go back and look at it, but that's where we're at right now. And that's it. I just spent a long time recording, a lot longer than I intended. So I hope this is actually not, it's probably going to be super long. And I'm sorry, this was supposed to be short and quick. And I didn't mean for it to be this long, but you guys know how I like to chat and just uh, talk. Anyway, um, like I said, let me know if you guys would change any of these rankings, where you would put other movies. Uh, let me know what you saw this year, what your least favorite movie it was of the year the most favorite movie was of the year and what you're looking forward to in 2022 and that's it for me today i will see you guys in my